Everyone loves a tools list, but here's the really ugly truth for you. If you don't get culture and your entire idea why right, none of the tools you actually choose in platform engineering really matter. So instead of just dropping a bunch of logos on a slide, I want to talk about the concepts that really matter first. And then I'll give you a couple tools I think you should really know about going into 2026. So the first thing that I want to really talk about here is that culture will always trump tools. Tools solve nothing without shared language, product mindset, and an adoption focus inside of platform engineering. And often PE teams fail when it's just doing things like installing a portal instead of actually designing an experience around day-to-day -day outcomes and golden paths. Culture really eats tools for breakfast. No amount of YAML files or Helm charts or pipelines is going to fix a broken engineering culture or the problems that come with long-standing stuck-in-the-mud ways of thinking. There's some core concepts to really understand before you actually decide on tools as well. And inside of platform engineering, we generally talk about this. We look at our various reference architecture diagrams. So Think in concepts first, orchestration in the back end, interfaces on the front end. The actual tools that enable you to achieve these things will come later. The most important layer to start with is your back end. And we often call this the platform orchestration layer, but that doesn't just mean you could use a platform orchestrator here. What's important is that this is the glue that wires your infrastructure and your workloads and workflows together. So this could be something like a self-made uh, simple solution API that you've built for yourself internally. It could even be one of the many pass offerings that's out there or an actual platform orchestrator like Humanitech or Kratix. And what's important though, is that you're building that backend, that unifying API that ties the entirety of the software development lifecycle together under a single set of endpoints. The next concept that you need to understand is that you also should think about platform interfaces, also known as the front end. So this is how your users, your developers, for example, consume the capabilities of the platform. And this could be things like a portal, such as Backstage, but often it's even just the CLI, it's code-based, or it's just part of their day-to-day -day flow. I make a commit into a repository and the platform is built around actions inside that repository in order to give me the outcomes that I need. The other concept that's important too is related to exactly what I just mentioned, how the interface translates into the backend. And this is delivery and ops automation. So this is through concepts like GitOps, uh, GitOps workflows, things that really come into play with CI and CD. The decisions you have to make are here, not so much in the individual tools. Start with the concepts first in that three-tier platform architecture design. So front end, back end, and the data or operational delivery layer. There's also something to be said though about the foundational tools that every platform engineer really needs to know. And honestly, I will just lay this into two. The first one is Kubernetes. This is the lingua franca of cloud native workload and container orchestration, and it's not going away. It's celebrated now over 10 years of being a thing. And while there are lots of other runtime options out there, if you're in platform engineering, at some point, you are probably going to be touching Kubernetes. So make sure you get familiar with it. The other right thing I think is really important is to either get familiar with Terraform or Open Tofu. There are other IAC products out there. There's also lots of options, but in reality, a majority of what we tend to see is specifically built around Terraform and the open source offshoot Open Tofu. The really important thing about this either way is that infrastructure as code is the baseline because one of the best practices in platform engineering is everything as code. And every platform engineer should know some layer or some level of Kubernetes and Terraform. These are basic table stakes when it comes to this game. So what are some essential tools I want you to think about in 2026? Well, the cool thing here is that none of these are new. These are foundational things inside of platform engineering that are very important and something you should keep an eye on because they are always evolving as this industry does. So when it comes to something like developer portals, I always like to think about things like Backstage, but also Port and Cortex. 
depending on what your needs are, there's a lot of different offerings out there. And yes, Backstage is open source, but there's managed options too that can be quite useful. It just depends on what you're looking for. But remember, in order to succeed with a portal, you need a really good backend underneath your IDP that is gathering all of that software development lifecycle under a single set of endpoints. So this is things like platform orchestrators. So you have Humanitech, you have the harness functionality that is similar, and you also have Kratix. But here you could have a pass system. So something like Heroku or even something like Laravel Cloud to make it quite simple. Other things that are important are ways and tools that help bridge that developer and kind of operational intent. So this is something like SCORE, the uh, open source project that is with the CNCF now, and it, it's a workload specification. The idea being that as a developer, I have one workload, one YAML file that declares what I need in a fairly abstract way. And the job of the platform is to pick that up and to translate that into outcomes. Score is kind of neat because it allows you to work from both a local context and one in an actual deployment environment without having to change how you're asking for stuff. It's abstracted and it's simple. It doesn't require a portal and the developer also doesn't have to understand how to use the platform API. It's just all part and parcel. Like I also mentioned already, one of the most important things you can learn and something you should really keep an eye on in 2026 is infrastructure as code tools. So I'm talking Terraform, I'm talking Open Tofu, which has a very exciting uh, community that's starting to build around it. Things like Pulumi, even Ansible here. There's a lot of options for IAC depending on what your needs are, and it's important to really stay up to date with them. And I would say in 2026, especially as AI starts becoming more and more uh, integrated into platform engineering, what happens with IAC will be quite interesting. The last little bit of application types and tools that I want you to start thinking about in the next year are your GitOps based continuous delivery tools. GitOps is incredibly important. And I would say in terms of platform engineering, it's becoming a gold standard. Why? Because we have a single source of truth in the heart of a repository. So really getting familiar with GitOps based tools like Argo CD, GitLab's um, continuous delivery functionality here, GitHub's as well. Stay on top of these because they are going to be more and more important as time goes on and get familiar with multiple of them because there's nothing wrong with uh, covering all your bases. But what I really want you to focus in on is that it's not all about just chasing logos and trying to fill out your reference architecture with as many as you can. You need to master the concepts and then pick the tools that fit inside of your org and fill in the gaps that you might have. One of the most important things inside of platform engineering is to understand your tooling landscape as it already exists. Do you have redundancies? Do you have holes? What do you need to do to fix these problems? And the best platform engineers in 2026 aren't going to be the ones that memorize every tool and know how to use every single one under the sun. They're going to be the ones that really understood combining those tools together into an internal product that their developers love and use. So just think about it this way. If you want to stay ahead in platform engineering, focus less on chasing new shiny logos or whatever fancy tool you see that interests you and more on building the right cultural foundation. The tools themselves will change, but the principles of how a platform needs to be built and who it needs to be built for, things around orchestration, interfaces, automation and standardization are here to stay.